Are inexpensive greenhouse tunnels worth it and do they stand up to the cold climates? Hi, I'm Jess from the blog SiloandSage.com and here we talk about all things homestead, homeschool, and handmade. And today we are going to talk about my greenhouse, hoop house, high tunnel, whatever you want to call it, and a little bit of drama behind it and how it has stood up to our Southeast Wisconsin zone 5B-ish weather. So last spring, I bought a hoop house frame and I was going to kind of DIY my own and I wanted to use it to extend our season here in Wisconsin and to be able to start my seeds, more of them outside and not take up as much space inside my house. Well, it did not go as planned. <laughs> Within several months of having my greenhouse hoop house going, it collapsed, <laughs> like literally broke into pieces. I had just bought a frame and I had put greenhouse plastic over it and it was a disaster. It like, we had a huge storm that came in and it ripped the entire thing apart and it was not good and it was a total waste of money. So my mom actually suggested that I buy a different one that she got that came complete with, came with really strong poles and it came with um, an actual like greenhouse plastic that was designed to go over it. So I decided to take the plunge after she recommended it and it was a good decision. It has definitely extended our season, but we did have a little drama with this one as well. So I originally bought just one of these greenhouse frames and I bought it on Amazon. It was pretty inexpensive and I was really happy with it. And I was so happy with it actually that I ended up buying two. And what I did originally, so we have an outbuilding behind our house and it used to be a garage. It's kind of converted now and can't be used as a garage anymore, but um, it has a gravel driveway that goes up to it. So I put the hoop house on the gravel driveway, secured it really well. It's kind of um, hidden between some trees and um, our actual garage so it didn't get a lot of wind but it got a good amount of Sun so I thought well this is perfect I'll add a second one and I added a door like a second door to this second frame that I got and I decided I was gonna try to hook them together to make it like one big greenhouse well we had a problem <laughs> the second greenhouse was not protected by the garage and actually got like it was in like a wind tunnel and this frame and this greenhouse blew over at least four or five times before I finally was like this is not working I cannot get this greenhouse to stay in this spot so we just this last weekend moved it to our backyard to a very very sunny spot as you can tell it we are getting southern sun coming from this side and I'm just gonna have two spots with two different greenhouses. So in the process of having um, this particular greenhouse flip over so many times, it has a few holes that I need to repair. The back door that I made, I had used a zipper kit that I just bought off Amazon and it is no longer working. It kind of ripped off. It's made to stick to the plastic and it ripped off and is no longer sticking. So I've ordered a new zipper so I can actually close this end, but this will be really nice. I now can have two doors. I'll turn around so you can see the other one. So I'll have two doors so I can get really good airflow in here in the warmer months and um, I'll get so much sun. And this greenhouse is actually on the ground. So I can actually plant things in here that are growing all the time. I don't have to just rely on pots and containers like I do in my other one. Now the other greenhouse, I actually put in some greenhouse, like a second layer of greenhouse plastic to make it work for the winter. And I'll show you that one in a second, but it worked really, really well. And I'm really happy with how it, how it handled the winter. So like I said before, the bars on this greenhouse are really, really sturdy, like really sturdy. <laughs> I used some clips to um, clip along the outside to keep the, um, the plastic from blowing off because we do live in a really windy area and where the greenhouse was before was obviously in like a wind tunnel. You can see the wind right now. <laughs> this one is not secured yet. We literally just moved it yesterday. 
so it's not totally secure to the ground. My other greenhouse is very secure to the ground. I have bricks and things that are keeping it in place. I have some stakes keeping down the plastic and I have the plastic tied down and just as secure as I can possibly make it. And that one really hasn't moved. Um, it hasn't moved since I secured it at all. It's done really, really well. We did have one windstorm that took out this greenhouse completely, like just flipped it and moved it and ripped the whole top off. And the other one just shifted and the plastic moved a little bit, but it didn't come off completely. And I was really happy with how it handled the storm. Now you can see that there are windows in this greenhouse and this is really important because you want to get a lot of ventilation when you're growing things in a greenhouse especially um, in a climate like ours in southern wisconsin where the weather can fluctuate like today it's 70 and next weekend it's supposed to snow <laughs> so we need to have something that could go with all of the fluctuations of the temperatures so i'm really excited to have this one where i can plant things in the ground and I can also have some pots and I'm going to have some green stock vertical garden towers. Here I am in my greenhouse. You can see that it is, well, a big mess <laughs> because for winter, the last couple months, I didn't really have anything growing in here. And so it just kind of became a storage space. I put up a second layer of greenhouse plastic so that it would grow in the colder months and it worked really well for November and December, and now in March, it is starting to grow things again. My original plan was to grow things in this greenhouse in December, January, February, but when we had a big windstorm in like December, I think, and it knocked over both, it knocked one of my greenhouses over completely, and then this one was like shifted and everything kind of got exposed to the really cold temperatures, and so it, really set me back and I decided it wasn't worth it at that time to try to get things going again and to just kind of start over. So I decided to put everything to rest for January and February and to start again now in March. The second layer of greenhouse plastic though was definitely a good idea. The temperature in here is significantly warmer with the second layer of greenhouse plastic. Um, this is just, I just ordered a roll off of Amazon and cut it to size. I used some really basic clips here to clip it to the, um, the frame. They're just some clips that I ordered from Amazon. I think they're even called greenhouse clips. And I just clipped this uh, plastic to the frame in a couple of random spots. It's really sunny and bright in here today. Um, so it is not <laughs> very high tech. It's not even all secure, like tight to the frame. It's very loose, but it still worked out really well. It definitely increases the temperature in here. I would say at least 10 or 15 degrees. I don't have a thermometer in here right now, so I can't say for sure, but it is a significant temperature difference, especially when it is sunny. You can see how the greenhouse has really turned into my storage space. When my one greenhouse flipped over completely, I brought in anything that had anything growing slightly. I just kind of threw it all in here. It all died pretty quickly though because it had been exposed to the colder temperatures. But I have a few things that have started to regrow on their own. I have some greens that have just started to regrow on their own. And then I planted, you can see the really tiny, tiny, tiny seedlings that are starting to grow in there. And then something has popped up in here that I don't even remember what that was because my chickens got in here and rooted around and dust bathed in these little grow bags um, before anything had a chance to grow. So I don't even remember what was supposed to be in there. Um, but I have some kale seeds that I saved. I just literally put them in that pot and kind of shook out some into some pots um, during the winter months. And I had like microgreens growing in here, things like that. And now there's really not much of anything. I also have these um, smaller little kind of cheap greenhouse shelves that come with a cover that are great for having like a second layer. This worked really well last spring for um, my seed starting. I put them all out in here and it really, really helped to give them another layer of warmth. And then I also have a couple green stock towers 
um, these vertical gardens are my favorite. And obviously there's not really much growing in here right now. My parsley had grown through most of the winter and is actually starting to uh, come back. You can kind of see. And I've planted a couple um, greens. I planted like some arugula and some peas and spinach that haven't really done much of anything. Got some arugula growing in here. And then this is my green stalk that totally flipped over. Doesn't even have a scratch on it, but it completely flipped over and a lot of the things that were growing in there fell out and I just, like I didn't even touch it. I just put it back together, like I stacked it back up. You can see this kale. Um, this is starting to regrow. I didn't even fill the soil back up, but some of the greens are starting to um, come back here and I didn't even, I, I mean the soil isn't even at the proper level and there's already seedlings coming back from something and I don't even know what it is. So you can see like there's no soil in this top layer. Like I did not even refill it at all. So I will have to go back in and clean this up, add in some more soil and get it started for the season. So you can see this greenhouse is tucked between some trees and our garage. So it doesn't have a problem with the wind and you can see all the things that were in the greenhouse when it flipped over <laughs> and are still sitting on the ground waiting to be put somewhere else. So this second greenhouse is tucked back before we get to our woods in kind of this random unused space next to our outbuilding, but it doesn't get as much wind and it still gets a ton of south facing sunlight. So these greenhouses really are quite large and can hold a lot inside. You can see, since there's nothing inside this right now, you can see just how much space there is. There's a lot of space for like, if you wanted to put in a table or if you wanted to plant on the ground or if you wanted to just put some green stock gar vertical gardens in here or pots or whatever it is that you wanted to put in here, you'd have a lot of space to do so. Hi, you coming to join me? You gonna till up my soil? Now, if you live in a really, really windy climate, especially one that has a lot of tornadoes or just tornado-like winds a lot, I think you would be disappointed in this greenhouse and you would get really easily frustrated and probably it would be a waste of money for you because I found that this plastic is kind of hard to secure um, in really, really large winds because the little ties that it comes with don't really stay on very well. I have found good luck with the clips that I showed you before. Clipping it on the outside does help it a lot to stay in place. And if you have strong winds, I would recommend even like somehow reinforcing the bottom of the frame with like some boards or I'm using bricks, but it probably is more of a temporary solution. If I'm gonna leave my greenhouse here where I'm gonna um, plant in the ground, I probably will want to have a more permanent solution. This area doesn't get as much wind, so it's probably not gonna be as much of an issue as it was in the other spot, but I want it to stay secure to the ground. So I may think about putting some sort of frame underneath it and really securing it to the ground. So right before we had that big windstorm that I told you about, I actually had filmed a YouTube video or what I thought was going to be a YouTube video about my greenhouse. So I'll show you a little clip because it'll show you what things looked like when things were actually growing in my greenhouse. But the greenhouses flipped over really shortly after I made that video. So I decided not to publish it because I wasn't sure how they would withstand the rest of the cold and if I could get them to stay secure. So that's why I didn't end up publishing that video. But um, I wanted to show you a little bit of it so that you could see what it looked like when I actually had things growing in the greenhouse. So this year I think is a really big experiment for what is gonna work to grow here and what isn't. This is my first winter with my hoop house. Oh, you can see I have a dying <laughs> tomato plant. I'm just waiting for these last little ones to ripen and then I'm gonna pull the whole plant out because it has seen some better days, that is for sure. But I'm gonna show you the different things that I have growing and some of it, like I said, is just an experiment to see what's gonna work. 
So I have two green stock vertical gardens and they have been so nice to have all year long. In this one, I just have greens. I have a lot of kale and arugula and some spinach. It hasn't been growing in here for that long. I started it outside and I'm just gonna see how long it goes. These things are a little bit more cold hardy. They should last a longer time. I started a fall round of lettuces and I put them in pots in my herb garden outside so that I could bring them in here when it got colder. So I just brought them in just a couple days ago. I have a couple more pots over here and I'm just, you know, gonna see how long they go. I honestly could not tell you what varieties of lettuce these are off the top of my head because I just, oh, those, that's arugula, <laughs> because I just, can't even remember. I just planted whatever I had. So I've got a bunch of carrots that are growing in these grow pots. I planted some peas. I've got potatoes growing. I have a lot of potatoes. The potatoes started, I'll show you the rest of my potatoes over here. The potatoes actually started outside and I just moved them in just a couple weeks ago when I built the rest of the hoop house. I have some celery. I ordered a bunch of celery, organic celery from Azure Standard. That's where I buy a lot. I would say maybe 60 to 75% of my groceries I buy from Azure. And so I bought a bulk order of organic celery to chop and freeze and juice and dehydrate. And so then I put a bunch of the bottoms in here and they are growing some good celery for us. My pepper plants outside did not do very well this year. Um, and so I brought them in here because just a couple weeks ago, they started to grow peppers and they did not do anything all summer long. So I'm excited to see if I actually at least get a few peppers. I've got some over here. Oh, this one could use a little, a little water. And you can see the little tiny peppers growing. Like why, why didn't you grow during the year <laughs> in the summer when you were supposed to grow? So I've got a few little plants here. Some of them I don't think are really gonna do much, but um, like I said, it's an experiment. I have a lot of different grow bags because this space where my hoop house is, you can see it's just a gravel. Um, gravel floor. It is a driveway that we don't actually use as a driveway. Um, it's like next to our house and it leads back to a second garage that my husband uses as an office. So I can't put permanent beds in this space. So I'm using a lot of grow bags and pots and things. I've got some radishes and some beets going here. I think it's actually, maybe it's kale. I did not write down anything that I planted in here. So I got all those potatoes. My um, five-year-old planted this kale that got eaten outside. And then he planted some cucumbers that I don't think are gonna actually work since it's so cold now. I have some herbs growing in here, parsley and basil. I've had a lot of um, bush beans growing. They're kind of, I don't know, toward the end. They're not doing the greatest anymore. They were doing really, really well. Planted some more peas. And I don't know what else is in here. Carrots. My green stock has done really well with um, bush beans and carrots. And then I have container tomatoes and herbs. They've done really, really well in here. I've got more carrots. I don't know what I planted over here. And I think I have some bunching onions in here. I think this is carrots and then this might have been kale seeds that fell from <laughs> I harvested all these kale pods um, and so I think a couple of the kale seeds fell into there I rescued a rosemary plant one of them I planted in my herb bed like actually in the ground and then this one I kept in a pot so that I could move it into um, the hoop house 
I have a few more carrots growing in this bigger grow bag. And mm, I think this is kale. And this is kale. This kale actually got all eaten and then it has started to come back. So we'll see what happens with it. So I'm gonna leave links in the description for everything I've talked about today. All the extra things, the clips, the greenhouse plastic, the greenhouse itself, everything. Now, since I purchased them, prices have gone up a little bit because prices of everything have gone up a little bit. So just keep that in mind that I did spend a little bit less money than you would have to spend right now, but it still is really affordable and a really good investment, I think, if you're looking for something that isn't permanent and something that can extend your season and something that you could even like move around if you needed to or that you're just not sure that you're ready to commit to thousands of dollars for a um, permanent greenhouse structure. Now, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you back here for the next video. Bye.